The GoPro Hero 7 White, my least favorite action camera of recent memory. When it was released, it fibbed on its box, charged the same amount for less features than previous models, and irritated me so bad that I felt the need to shout it from the mountaintops of the uh, mountaintops of a small YouTube channel to say that it wasn't worth buying. However, some firmware updates and finding this at a local store for almost $100 might be able to change my mind. Anything's possible, I guess. So almost a year later, is the GoPro Hero 7 White still garbage? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So let's get this right out of the way. This isn't a GoPro bashing video in any way. I love their Hero 7 Black, and to this day, it remains the best action camera ever made. The DJI Osmo Action is a better vlogging style camera, but nothing is better than the Hero 7 Black for straight up action. That doesn't save this one yet, so let's see what's been changed since the last time we talked about this previously crazily disappointing camera. And to start off, let's cover the updated basic specs of the camera because some have been updated since October of 2018. The GoPro Hero 7 White has a something size sensor inside of it that hasn't changed, and it still can record up to 10 megapixel stills. And here's the most exciting part. It can actually record it up to 1080p 60 frames per second now. That I mean, that doesn't exactly sound earth shattering or groundbreaking, that doesn't sound exciting, but if you remember back to my original video, the Hero 7 White shipped in a box that said it could record 1080p 60, but in actuality recorded in 1440p. And while yes, that sounds better because more numbers are always better, right? I mean, that's just human nature. The deal of that though, is that it was at a four by three aspect ratio as opposed to what you're seeing right now, which is a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio. So if you wanted to upload to a space like YouTube, you would need to have that exported in 16 by 9 which means either you would need to crop in on the image or you just have to live with some black bars on the side which is not and that's not okay if you don't know cameras you don't necessarily know that you're walking into that problem but now their box and camera are actually synced up and agreeing so hooray Physically, I mean, there is no change. My biggest complaint about the Hero 7 White has always been and will always be the lack of a removable battery. Now, I don't mind the GoPro Sessions having the same feature, but they're like, they're tiny little box cameras. I mean, they're super small. They're not a fully sized GoPro or GoPro clone. This is kind of like a GoPro clone. But enough jabbering. I mean, it's no secret by now that there are five gates that a camera has to pass for me to consider it an action camera and not some creepy little fisheye distorted camera that nobody would ever use. And those are the pillars, the pillars of, action. of action. 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 action, action, action. First up, video quality. Now it's gonna be in 1080p, hooray. And besides the 1080p, there isn't much to say here. Even back last year, I thought the Hero 7 White had perfectly usable image quality. Something I'll never say about GoPro cameras released up to this point of mid 2019 is that their image looks bad because it doesn't. Every single camera they've released that I've used and I started a few years ago with the Hero 3, I mean, it looks great and you get plenty of dynamic range and I actually like how the skin tones look in the automatic settings here more than I like on the Hero 7 Black. I mean, it just looks better. Now you are missing some ProTune features that the Hero 7 Black has, but, and that's some things that haven't been updated and are still lacking on the white. I mean, another thing is you do not get any selectable fields of view. So you're basically stuck with 1080p in the wide format. Now that bothered me and it still bothers me at a $200 price point, but buying this for almost half of that, I'm less than inclined to complain. And that's a running theme that you'll hear in the rest of this video is for $200, the camera still arguably isn't worth it, but sale prices make those complaints less applicable because we'll talk here in a little bit. The competition then is much better for this camera. Image quality isn't the only thing that matters when it comes to overall video capabilities of a camera. Audio is just as, if not more important, and the Hero 7 White does have decent audio recording chops. Now, if I wanted to compare this to an existing camera, I'd rate it around the Hero 6 Black levels, which were never as good as a non-waterproof camera like the Sony FDRX 3000, but it's always been perfectly acceptable to me. I actually think this is pretty good for getting audio. And while this is not normally a pillar of action, let's hop outside real quick for a vlogging test so you can see the image and the audio, all of it paired together really quickly. See you out there. 
Whoa, welcome to the vlogging test of the GoPro Hero 7 White. Now, I have not used this camera in about, what, like six, seven months when it was first initially released. We had some very big disappointments with it, but something that I have never complained about is the image quality or the stabilization, both of which you can see right now. So we're just hand, we're just walking around this field because it's like a beautiful day outside. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. We're currently recording this on Father's Day. And yeah, I have never had a problem with either the image quality, the stabilization, or the audio quality, all of which you can see right now. And again, what else do you really need if you're gonna be using a camera for vlogging? You need those three things. So as much as the problems I had with the camera started out with when it was initially released, I have less of those problems now, especially now where we're actually recording in 1080p. We're not recording in 1440 and we'll need to crop it later. This legitimately has 1080p now. So 16 by nine aspect ratio, you know, it's 2019. Who knew that we had to still clear those hurdles, yeah? But yeah, this is the image quality, this is the audio quality, this is the vlogging capabilities. If you wanted to get the GoPro Hero 7 White, is it still garbage? Eh, you'll have to keep watching the video. See you there. <laughs> the next pillar the GoPro Hero 7 White needs to redeem itself on is durability. Nothing has changed. Still the same, still the same body. Physically, there have been no updates, so it is still the exact same body design. I mean, it's still able to take a hit and still able to go underwater without a case to 33 feet or 10 meters. I mean, that doesn't mean bad though, right? I mean, I dedicated a whole video to me destroying one of these, and frankly, I was pretty darn impressed with its durability. It took the hits, and it just kept on going for longer than I had any expectation for it to last. And I would say that this is durable enough to be considered a legitimate GoPro in my opinion. One quick note though, if you haven't seen any of my other coverage about the Hero 7 White, something the Hero 7 Black and the DJI Osmo Action both have are replaceable lens covers. So you don't need to brick the whole camera if you get a scratch across the lens. You're not gonna be permanently disabled in your video capabilities if you scratch that. But the 7 White is lacking this feature. This is just all in one, so don't be too rough on the, don't be too rough on the lens. Thirdly, in our redemption pillar story is another big disappointment here. And that's compatibility with GoPro style mounts and accessories. Firmware has not yet fixed this. I don't even know if you could fix this in firmware. And why this is disappointing is on the one hand, this camera is properly shaped and can be used with third party gimbals and the entirety of the GoPro mount ecosystem because it's included cage does have those dual prong legs on it. So it will work with all GoPro mounts. Pretty standard stuff. But internal hardware and software wise, the Hero 7 White doesn't work with any of the other OEM GoPro accessories. So if you want to use the audio adapter, nope. Do you want to use the Karma Grip? Nope. None of the exciting things the GoPro has going for it, you can't use. And that's pretty disappointing if you are looking to buy this camera as a, not necessarily as a camera itself, but if you're looking to buy an action system, meh. Probably, I don't know that I would. Another big no change pillar from last time is my personal favorite, ease of use. And much like I said back in October, sure, the way to make something easier to use is to take out some of the features, right? I mean, the less buttons you can actually have the ability to press, then the camera's just overall, objectively, going to be easier to use, right? Probably not the way I do it, but... And sadly, no updates have come out unlocking features, so yeah, still the same level of usability. I mean, that's not to say bad. I am making that sound a little worse than it is. I mean, something GoPro has always done right is they have some of the easiest user interfaces, and the Hero 7 White still works great. But like I said in the beginning, I do wish it had some more selectable fields of view. I do wish it had access to Pro Tunes. I wish it had more features unlocked, because there are cameras out there for less than this that do have those features. And last, but certainly not least, we have the pillar that is turning the world of action upside down, stabilization. It's the new arms race for action cameras, with both GoPro and DJI looking to take the lead. But this isn't a class leading camera, this is the Hero 7 White. Class leading and Hero 7 White don't belong to each other. But in all fairness, the stabilization here was always acceptable. Much like audio, it's still roughly the same equivalent as the Hero 6 Blackline, which at the time was the best on the market. I mean, it was the best at one point. And like we saw in the vlogging test, this makes walking around and talking to this camera super simple and gives you very usable footage even when hand holding. I mean, even just doing this, you'll be able to get nice locked off type of videos without needing too many additional accessories like tripods or gimbals. And I hate bringing a bunch of crap with me when I go to make videos. I like just something like this that's small, works great. But at the end of the day, is the GoPro Hero 7 White still garbage? 
because it was when it was first released. I mean, at least now they aren't misleading people with the box art saying the camera was recording in a method that it didn't or couldn't. It still has a non-removable battery and it lacks several recording modes that older cameras of the same price point could do. If you can only find this for the list price of $199, I still don't recommend it. You could get a used or refurbished Hero 5 Black for less money and it has way more functionality than the Hero 7 White ever could. This is just a camera that you'll see on the shelf and you're like, hey, it's a GoPro, we should buy that. Not knowing that there could be better options out there. But if like me, you were able to find this on sale somewhere for around a hundred bucks, then I would give this a shot. At that price point, I can overlook some of its major faults because at a hundred dollars, the competition doesn't really offer anything like these levels of functionality. I mean, there are other action cameras out there for the price, but nothing that offers this level. I mean, if they really want to make the Hero 7 White a viable camera, they need to cut this price when I say they, I mean GoPro, to around 150 bucks standard. That would make it much easier for me to actually recommend on a consistent basis. Thanks for watching.